In this episode of How I Got My Start in Finance, we meet Howard Morgan. One of the original members of Renaissance Technologies, he is a quant hedge fund legend. He shares his story with Real Vision's Grant Williams about the start of a new business model that revolutionized trading. I consider myself a lapsed academic. Uh, I started out uh, going to, to Cornell for a PhD in operations research and computer science, in, which I got in 1968. So it was a little before most people were uh, Aware knowledgeable computers. about computers yeah. at all. Uh, I had been very lucky in 65 at City College. My mentor uh, said to me when, when he asked me what I'm doing next year, I said, I'm going to MIT for physics. And he whispered in my ear, just like in the graduate, and said, you don't want to do that. He said, computers. <laughs> <laughs> and fortunately, I listened to him and went to Cornell and, and uh, then taught at Cornell and Caltech and then at the University of Pennsylvania for about 12, 14 years in total. And at Penn in 1973, I brought the ARPANET to Philadelphia with Machine 50 on what was the ARPANET. Uh, I think now we have about 10 billion devices on it, but right. we had 50 then and uh, learned about what the future was going to be. And, and through most of the 70s, uh, I was uh, one of the world experts in what we called in the 70s the Office of the Future, right. uh, which meant word processing and electronic mail and voicemail. In fact, uh, when I said in 1980, I think executives one day will type their own emails and not have their secretaries print them. Uh, the Philadelphia Inquirer printed that with a kind of ha ha ha. <laughs> right. uh, and the secretaries union picketed my office because they thought I was going to the end of secretaries. So uh, I did get that one right, however. You did. <laughs> and then some. Although and, I think we're going back the other way now. That a lot of these executives are getting people to type their emails for them. Some, yeah, they, well, or Siri. I mean, or Siri, yeah. Or Siri. And that's something else. We did a lot of research back in the... 70s and 80s, which was voice recognition and voice synthesis, but it was a little too early for yeah. that. That background in computing um, was obviously a big factor in your in your first, when you lapsed, yeah, your so, foray into capitalism. It, very much so. So I, I had helped start a company in the mid-70s uh, with a fellow out at the Rand Corporation, and that company did Unix. It was the first Unix license, actually. And Jim Simons, a friend of the founders, uh, who was still a professor, uh, funded it and through with himself and some friends and so I met Jim and in 1981 we started doing some investing together and he said to me in early 82 he said look uh, I've made some money now with some of this trading I made more than I can do with just trading so we want to do some more venture as well so why don't you take a leave of absence and we'll start Renaissance and so in April of 82 Jim as CEO and me as president we started Renaissance Technologies uh, and it at that time had about $70 million to invest, 35 in the quant trading, uh, and it wasn't quite black box, but it was quant oriented trading, and 35 in venture. And we did that for seven years, uh, very successfully, until at the end of seven years, Jim said, look, the venture has a 25% IRR uh, rate of return, which is top decile, but it takes five or seven years to get that liquid. And I've now got the trading to where it's the 38% IRR uh, net, and I can cash in tomorrow morning if I just want to go home. So let's take the venture out of Renaissance. So Renaissance then went purely quant trading. That was right about the time Medallion Fund started. Uh, and I then kept my office next door to Jim uh, and did venture capital on my own for the next 14 or 15 years and then started some more organized stuff. We'll, we'll come to that in a second, but I'm, I'm fascinated to go back to the early days of Renaissance because, I mean, they changed everything. I mean, that, you two guys changed the investing world. I uh, mean, what, what was it, in the early days, you're obviously trying something that, that, there were a few people doing it, but nobody had really kind of figured out how to put it all together. What were those days like? Very exciting. I mean, Jim had assembled a team of mathematicians and computer scientists and uh, some astrophysicists and the goal was to use statistical models to beat the markets. And he believed that could be done. Uh, he believed it meant really good data science, what today we would call you know, big data science. Yep. And no one was doing that at the time. And uh, putting together that level of intellect and putting it on a problem of taking these time series of all the data you could get and co collecting it over long periods of time. Renaissance has more market data, I think, than almost anyone else does. And they've got it going back uh, into the early, into the mid 70s. And everybody else, you know, now you can buy market data, but it's very different what you're buying and what they're keeping. 
Uh, they also became uh, one of the largest users of computing power. Uh, certainly in the late 90s, they had more processors per employee than Google. Uh, they had you know, thousands of processors. Yeah. When everybody else was working with a few computers, they realized that with big parallel processing algorithms, you could do much more interesting data analysis. And they successfully built that. Uh, and a lot of that team was out in Stony Brook, not in, in Manhattan, where Jim and I were mostly. Uh, but guided by Jim, mostly, uh, I threw in my computer science knowledge where it was helpful, but uh, was more focused on the venture, venture side. Uh, it really did change the world because the Medallion Fund delivered astonishing returns and continues to over you know, what is now a 30 plus year period. And that's sort of never been done. But did you, when, when, you, when you looked at the results of this, I mean, even, even for you guys, it must have been, well, these can't be right, these numbers can't be right. I mean, the, the numbers, they're truly extraordinary. Well, yes, I mean, I, I, but I think in some ways it was, uh, one of the ways we used to talk about it was, think of, think of it as a casino and, and we're the house. Right, right. <laughs> right, I mean, because in fact, everyone else, almost everyone else was, was playing uh, with emotion. And I know Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's partner, has been quoted as saying when people say, why are you guys doing so well and the rest of us aren't? And he said, it's because you invest on emotion and we invest on, on logic. Renaissance Technologies was able to apply data science to the world of finance. While that might seem like a norm today, Howard Morgan was there when it all started. He knew then that with the advancement of technology, the future of trading was ready for more logic and less emotion. For Real Vision, I'm Justine Underhill.